This edition of Mac Voices is supported by the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter to keep you up on all the latest from Mac Voices. Watch or listen to Mac Voices straight from your email client. Sign up at macvoices.com slash newsletter and stay up to date. Hi, I'm Chuck Joyner, and this is Mac Voices Live on Facebook. Folks, I hope you're somebody's out there joining us, but if not, uh, you will find this show in the normal uh, Mac Voices feeds and channels. Um, so here's the story. A few, a few, I guess a month and a half ago, Michael Cohen and I had a discussion about his book, Take Control of Pages. And that was it. And, of course, as fate would have it then, uh, Apple decided to release an update to Pages, which seems to happen, you know, no matter when you publish a book, they're going to do an update just three days later or something. So um, Michael and I started talking about just how much of an update, though, that Apple had released. And we decided to do another interview about it, but we decided to do it here on Facebook Live so we could also let you ask questions and invite folks to send in questions about pages that they might have in the hopes that Michael could help us. So that's what we're doing here now. And with that, I want to welcome Michael Cohen. Michael, it's good to see you. Hi, folks. Hope you've got a, uh, a hot beverage. Or a cold beverage or whatever whatever it does, right. whatever it does it for you. So, Michael, you heard me tell the sort of the backstory. I'm sure there was a little bit of trauma in your mind when when Apple decided to release that next update. But well, as I recall, I, I wrapped up the uh, version 2.1 of Take Control of Pages in at the end of the second week of March, and as I handed it to Joe, I said, "Wouldn't it be terrible if Apple in their uh, event they had scheduled next week, announced a new version of Pages. He says, well, let's hope that doesn't happen. Joe being the publisher of Take Control Books. So, of course, Apple did. They updated the entire iWork suite. They updated um, Keynote and Numbers and Pages. And they updated it on the Mac, on iOS, and on the web. And they were big updates. They were designed for education, among other things, because that was the big Apple show that they were going to do. Uh, they had an event at a uh, Chicago school. But the changes they made to Pages were significantly more than they made to the other two iWork apps. So <laughs> four days after my book came out, <laughs> I'm looking at a list of changes that, uh, frankly, had me daunted. Um, to, to give you an example, I, I was telling Chuck before we began on the show, every edition of uh, a Take Control book that's it, a revision of a previous version will have a short section, what's new in blah, blah, blah. The last two versions of the Pages books, if you put their what's new sections together, it still wasn't as long as the what's new section I ended up with dealing with the changes Apple came out with the third week in March. <laughs> Yeah, that that's it was huge. It yeah. was a huge update and a good one. I mean, well, the, the the only the only thing that upset me about it was I had to write about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the interesting thing is that for all the changes that you talk about in the in the book in the in the newest edition, the very newest edition of the book, uh, it, they didn't seem to get a whole lot of play uh, on the Mac web. Now we all know that Apple doesn't do a real great job of of telling everyone what the changes are. Um, but right. I was, uh, given given what you told me about the number of changes and the and the scope of the changes, I was really surprised that more people didn't start talking about it. Uh, th there's a lot of reasons. I think people have uh, – when Pages 5 came out, I think near the end of 2013, where they threw out the old version of Pages completely and replaced it with an entirely new one, they did the same thing with Numbers and with Keynote as well. People got turned off because they stripped away a lot of features that Pages had had. And the hue and cry that I was hearing all over the web was, oh, Apple's dumbed this thing down. It's no good anymore. They've ruined it. I'll never want to use it again. And it's taken a good deal of time for Pages to get back what it had lost. And people aren't interested in Pages anymore. I don't know if they're even interested in word processors anymore. Um, that's not big news. Big news are web apps and stuff like that. Um, nonetheless, the changes that Apple came out with are some very interesting things that I've never seen before. Um, for the first time, let me, let me uh, explain what Apple did with Pages back in 2013. Is they said, 
is they redesigned Pages to be an iCloud-centric app. That is, no matter where you worked on Pages, on your Mac, on your iOS device, or even in the web browser app that they had developed, you would have access to the same file, and they would all work together seamlessly. You wouldn't destroy a file by working on it in the browser after you'd worked on it on your Mac. There would be no corruption issues like they'd been before. That no matter which device you used it on, and no matter which Pages app you used, the file would be available and editable and coherent. So that that's what they've been doing ever since. They've been building that infrastructure back out and making it cross platform. So pages can work no matter what device what no matter what Apple device you have. Although in the browser you can also be working on Windows. You can have a Windows Explorer and use the web app and work with pages just fine as well. Well, now at this point, I want to make sure that I, I see we have uh, Norbert has joined us uh, in in the in the Facebook chat. Um, I want to make sure that folks know that you know if you if you post a question for Michael, we'll do our best to answer it, or if not, try to get you the answer after the show. Um, but that's one of the things we want to do with this live is is give you the opportunity to yeah. ask Michael some questions, not just me. But until we get some questions, I've got some uh, some some folks who had sent in earlier questions, and we'll get to those in a little while. But, Michael, where, where are the biggest changes here? I mean, when I've launched the new pages, am I going to be assaulted with uh, – or the, again, I, I – No, it, it, it will – I can't pages even seven, qualify looks, this, that the, you, this, this version of pages. <laughs> the version of pages, which on the Mac is version 7, which on iOS is version 4, the web browser version doesn't have a number of changes as it changes. Um. It looks pretty much the same as the one that came before it, but there's got a feature set that's been expanded out a bit more. It's more flexible and does a few more things. For the first time, Apple has also done something that they hadn't done with Pages in the past. Uh, and that is that in the past, the Pages on the Mac was the most robust, the most powerful one, the one that had all the features. And if you worked on iOS, you had most of the features. If you worked in the browser, you had a lot of the features and all, all of them available. But usually the one on the Mac was the one that had everything. This is the first version of Apple kept where there are features available in iOS that aren't available on the Mac, but only on your iPad or iPhone. And those two have to, are a drawing and what they call smart annotations. And Apple made a big song and dance about them because they're really great things to demo. Because, uh, you know, with an iPad and an Apple Pencil, you can do a drawing right inside of your Pages document. It goes right on the page. you got a pencil tool. you got a paintbrush tool. you got selection tools. you got colors. you got, you know, it's, it's a little paint program built into Pages. And with smart annotations, you can do the same thing. You can mark up text by circling, underlying things using prolator marks. And you draw them with your pencil on your iPad. And those stick with the text. So even if you edit the text and you, the text moves on the page, the smart annotations move with it. But you can't create smart annotations on the Mac nor on the web, only in iPhone or iPad. And uh, you, you can view them on the other two. You can delete them on the other two, but you can't make them on the other two. So that's the first time that Apple's come up with a feature that was iPad and iPhone only for an iWork app. I've not seen that before, which I, I, I kind of interesting, but it's also, you know, makes a lot of sense because you don't really have an Apple Pencil for the Mac. You know, you can't really just draw on the screen with a pencil and have it work. So you, you're going to start the whole debate over whether we need touchscreen Macs if you're not careful here. No, I don't want to have a touchscreen Mac. I'm very happy with my 27-inch Retina display and... Uh, <laughs> I don't want fingerprints. All it's hard enough to clean my iPad screen. <laughs> a twenty-seven inch screen is just too much to deal with. I'd be running out of Windex. You know, I'd have to bring a tanker truck in. Yeah, well, and it feels yeah, like what, some of those some of those capabilities for the iPhone and iPad they do make a little more sense just because of the because because of the very nature of it. I mean, I'm it's sure, a touch interface. Yeah, and, and I'm sure someone's going to argue with me and say, "Well, but I want to be able to do that on my Mac. I should be able to, to do it with, say, a, a, a Wacom tablet or something like that." And okay, maybe so, but you know, that's 
it just if, if I guess it just would feel more natural. Mm-hmm. On, on an it's also or an iPad. these are great features, and they're really, uh, as I said, wonderful to demo with. And especially the smart annotations make a lot of sense for a, a teacher who's marking up student exams or student essays. Mm-hmm. You know, being able to just draw a proofreading mark right in the margin is a lot easier than adding a comment and going through the whole comment interface. Although you can see a lot more in a comment than with a little scrawled note. Mm-hmm. Teachers are used to marking stuff up with colored pen, you know? So why not give that capability to the iPad where it makes sense? Because you've got an Apple Pencil that works just dandy with it. Or you've got one of these, which also you can draw and do those things with. So, But although those are the features that Apple made the most about in their presentation, there are a couple of other changes that they made that I actually think are more important, although they're less diff- less easy to demo, less easy to talk about. Okay. But they're fundamentally important. And that has to do with what are called page layout documents. You, are you familiar with what that is? Well, in, in a general sense, I'm not sure where you're going with that, but in a general sense, yeah, because you and I have had part of this discussion that right. um, the word, the, the pages is – both a word processor and or sort of a combination of word processor page layout. Right. That's exactly the case. And it always has been. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but when, when pages five came out, most of the page layout goodness vanished from it. You could still create page layout documents, but that was by virtue of just a single checkbox hidden on one of the format inspectors where you turn on or off body text. When you turn off body text, you no longer have a text area on the page where text just naturally flows. Instead, the page is a blank page. You can stick things on. And that's great if you're doing posters or, you know, handouts that are just one page long and you just want to arrange things and make it look pretty. It's not so good for longer documents. Well, in pages seven, they have beefed up page layout documents significantly. First of all, there are a bunch of templates now that come with pages that are built on top of page layout documents. And more importantly, they added something called a master page capability. What this lets you do is if you have a page layout document, in other words, a uh, document that has no body text area, you can design master pages to say, this page, I want a page design that has a text box here, an image here, and a video thing here. And I want another page design that has two text boxes side by side. And I can make those master pages so when in page layout document that doesn't create new pages on the fly because there's no running text, when you add a new page to that document, you get to choose which master page it follows. So you can say, oh, I need a page now that's mostly text. Oh, I need a page now that's mostly picture because this, this page will be full of pictures. And you can have those built into the document. You can create templates that have those master pages built into them. In addition, they revised how uh, ebooks work, the ebook uh, templates. There are two formats now for ebook templates. They're all, they're, they had been for a little while, but now they've really leveraged that. Vertical layout ebooks are designed for Your typical ebook, a novel or, you know, a biography, something that has running text, something you'd ordinarily open up in iBooks, you make the text bigger and smaller, the text will reflow depending on the choices you make. And the horizontal page layout documents, the horizontal ebook templates are based on page layout documents, and those don't have a running text. Those are designed to be what are known as fixed layout ebooks, which are great for uh, photo books, books that have a lot of graphics, books that have a lot of figures, books that require a very precise precise text layout where you can't adjust the size of the text. You can't adjust the font of the text. What's on the page is on the page. You'll always have the same pages. And so by putting together master pages and that uh, fixed layout ebook together, you've now got a very rich way of creating all sorts of ebooks in pages. Whether you're writing a novel or whether you're writing a travel brochure, you've got a template for you that you could do an ebook format, which is really, really very cool. In addition, 
they've even added something, and this was kind of hidden away in the interface, where you can tag the elements you put on a master page. Like you put a text box here and give it a tag saying main text, let's say. And then if you decide, well, I don't like this master page, I need a different master page here. You have another master page with a text box in a different location, but you tag that text box with main text and you swap that in. Pages will know, oh, the text that I had here on the old one should go here on the new one. So you've got a whole tagging capability now. This is really cool. But again, as I see you getting a little bit, you know, confused looking, it's hard to describe until you do it. And it's hard to describe until you read about and see examples in action. So it's a terrible demo, but it's an incredibly powerful feature. Well, if I if I understand what you're saying correctly, isn't <laughs> isn't it a little bit like an, uh, in working in Keynote, where if if I download a Keynote theme, I have you know multiple different layouts within that theme for the different slides? Mm-hmm. Is that the same concept? It, it, that's that's what master pages are very much like. They're not quite the same, but that's a very good analogy. They're quite like that. Yes. And you can build your own master pages in your own templates for your own documents that way. Yeah, that I mean, again, thinking about doing presentation work in Keynote, it is very mm-hmm. powerful because whether you've created them or whether the, the template author has created them, they 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 introduce us. I guess what's the phrase? I guess a consistent look. And mm-hmm. there's some consistency that, okay, all my photos are going to be masked in a circle and all the text is going to flow this way or be justified this way or that way. And it, it mm-hmm. definitely does improve it. I really, I guess I really hadn't thought about pages, the fact that pages didn't have it, maybe because I've never done that same kind of work in, in pages for a, a, a printed document or a written document. Well, well now, um, When I did the first version of my Take Control of Pages book, one of the things I was asked by a fellow Take Control author is now that page layout documents have been really hampered this way, which they were in Pages 5, how would you do something like a simple newsletter? And I wrote a little tutorial about how to put it together, and that appeared in the first Pages book, but it was really clumsy and awkward, and I really wouldn't want to support (laughs) continue to support a newsletter that was built that way because it was such a fragile way of building it. But with all the new capabilities now built into pages, putting together a corporate newsletter, you know, of like six or seven pages, you know, with running text and columns and, you know, pictures here and there, it's an awful lot easier because you've got master pages now. You have linked text boxes now. You have all sorts of capabilities you didn't have before. And suddenly you can do some very sophisticated things. Um, it's not quite, you know, uh, Quark Express or PageMaker. Or in design, but it's sure come a lot closer to it. Well, and again, I have this argument with folks all the time. Do you really, how many of us really need Quark Express or in design <laughs> at, at some point? And, and there are people that definitely do. There's no question. And, and they're oh, yeah. constantly in that direction. But for most of us, something like this is, is more than capable of doing 98% oh, yeah. of what we want to do or need to do. And if you need to do a little more, well, then, okay, maybe it's time to go and buy another tool. Mm-hmm. I have a cousin who uh, has a restaurant, and they he's have a menu that my mother, bless her heart, you know, she's in her 80s, but she still sits at her computer and does stuff. She updates the menu, and she's had to uh, rent InDesign from Adobe, you know, because you don't own software anymore in order to update this menu and when they change things on the menu, because they've got it that way. But with how Pages works now, she could probably do the entire menu for my cousin's restaurant using the page layout capabilities of Pages, and it would look just as good and be a whole lot easier for my mother to deal with. Yeah, yeah, because the learning curve on some of those others, even to get the, the basic functionality mm-hmm. out of them, is steep, and it just... Again, maybe, maybe I'm biased because I've been using Pages now for a while, but I don't recall the learning curve being that steep. Now, maybe to go and do a particular thing, I had to search help or maybe even, heaven forbid, you know, go search the web and, and to, to find out how to do it. But I, I was able to get plenty of, of, of work done without having to engage in any of that because it just yeah, well, familiar. The, well, the, the thing with Pages that's nice is you can open it up not having ever seen it before. And use it to 
use it to write. You can start writing right away. You don't need to know all of its features. You know, much more sophisticated software with a lot more controls and bells and whistles. It reminds me of the early days of the Moog synthesizer when uh, Wendy Carlos said, for everything you can control, you have to control. <laughs> which made it an awful lot harder to make music. It gave you a lot of control, but you had to think about everything about the shape of the sound you were making. And with tools like InDesign are much the same. They they don't start off in a simple mode. They're already designed for professionals who know about leading and, and all sorts of other things that most people don't know about and don't care about. They just want to throw some darn words on the page. And Pages certainly lets you do that. But you know what? Well, we all started that way, and then we learned things about letting and tracking, and mm -hmm. you know, ty typography, and you you start to you become educated as to what it is you're seeing. And and my classic thing always is: I know I like it, or I know I don't like it, but I'm not always sure why. And that's been a, it's been a journey for me is to figure out and and mm -hmm. be educate educated to those things and, and why it's important mm -hmm. and why it's easier to read one direction and not easier to read mm -hmm. in another. But yeah, I, I just, I feel like pages always has been a, a super powerful program. And some of the things you're saying, just I, I'm excited to go and learn a little more about them. Well, you know, if, if we were able to create our take control books in pages, I would be very happy with that because it's, it's a lovely program to work in. The fact is we, we have to use a, a different program because we have so many complex production macros we use. But that's a production thing. Most people aren't producing a line of books. Yeah. But if I, if I had to write, you know, essays for school, heck, if I have to write an article for tidbits, I can write it in pages just fine. Because, you know, I, all I do is just, you know, share the document in iCloud with Adam or Josh, the editors, and they, they can put it into the WordPress format we're now using, and we're done. Right. So, you know. And Pages is very smart about things with smart quotes and automatic M dashes and all sorts of other nice things that it does. So I want to remind our viewers, I see that Kurt has joined us um, along with a couple others and want to make sure that they know they can ask any questions in the chat uh, and, and Mike will try to answer them. But I want to jump over because we did get a couple questions pre-show from folks that couldn't be here tonight. They're either in the mm -hmm. wrong time zone or working or something. Um, but uh, Mike asked, can you touch on some ways to do mail merge in Pages, seeing it's not a, a part of Pages feature set? In the past, I heard there was a way that could, this could be accomplished with AppleScript. Does this still hold true? True, excuse me. Or could you point us to some resources that cover this? So do we have mail merge yet in Pages, Michael? Yes and no. <laughs> uh, I love it when you get well, decisive. When, when Pages 5 came out, which disappeared completely. And then in one of the early iterations, 5.1, 5.2, something like that, they built an Apple script support for doing mail merge. But there is no user interface for doing a mail merge document. And there continues not to be. However, by the end, I think it was in 19, uh, 2014, I posted on the uh, Take Control of Pages, the Take Control uh, site, the page for my Pages book. There's a, a blog entry. Every book Take Control publishes has a blog that goes with it. And I wrote a blog entry about some stuff I'd seen at a site called Mac OS Automation that uh, – had complete instructions for using pages, numbers, and a simple app that would let you do mail merge quite well. And I wrote that up back in uh, 2014. And I just tried it out this morning since uh, Chuck shared this uh, email that he already got with me. It still works. Hmm. So, yes, you, you can do mail merge, and, it's, and it is – you don't have to write a line of Apple script. You just have to have numbers – and pages and follow the instructions. There's even a video on the site that walks you through all the steps you need to take. It, and it works great. Very so nice. you, you can write form letters with mail merge. You can do address labels, although your contacts app will do uh, address labels just fine. But yeah, you, you can do mail merge pretty nicely with pages now. Okay. Pages and numbers together. 
I'll make sure I have that in the show notes. And I just see Joe Kissel is in our chat, and he said he's used it and it works, and he dropped in um, a, a link. So I'll put a link to your article in. He's put a link in there that goes straight to, I guess, the uh, the, the the procedure. So thank you, Joe. Yeah. Um, and thank you. The, the, only, the only obstacle you may run into is when you download the uh, thing from the automation site, there's a little app that comes with it. And if you launch it and you have what's called gatekeeper enabled on your Mac, and that's by default, it will say, this is by an unregistered developer and it won't let you open the app. So all you have to do is hold down the control key on your keyboard, click on the app, choose open from the menu, and you'll see the dialog saying it's an unregistered developer, but there will be an open button. Click that, and from, from that point on, the app will always open when you want it to. So that that's the only hidden gotcha there, and that's only because it's a, a security thing. Right. Uh, Norbert in the chat asks, as far as I know, you cannot sync my templates between pages for Mac and pages for iOS. Is there a workaround, or do you think Apple will add it later? Uh... There isn't a workaround that I know about. What you can do is you can create your own templates and then save them as separate template files in iCloud. And when you open up pages for iOS, you can open up that template and add it to your My Templates on your iOS device. But the My Templates thing in iOS is currently a device by device on a device by device basis. You, you add a, a, a template to pages for Mac. And it's only on your Mac. It's not on any of your other devices. I don't know if they'll get around that or not. They probably will at some point. But in the meantime, it's really easy to just create a template and save it externally and then import it into pages on the device you tend to use. Okay, so that would give you access to it. It wouldn't necessarily yeah. sync it. If you made a change no. to that template, it wouldn't sync it. But No, but in fact, you can't make a change, change to a template. Once you made a template, the template's as it is. When you open it up, it becomes a document. You change the document. You save it as a new template, and then you'll have the new template. Got it. Okay. But you can't edit a template in and of itself. It's Once you've saved it, it's nailed down. Hmm. Okay. Um, another, it's not much of an obstacle. Yeah, no, no. But it's, you know, it's one of those things. I guess we're all trying to make things just a little easier. Um, viewer Larry, Larry emailed me earlier and said, is there a way to set the default for the text wrap settings so that I don't have to change them in each new project? No. Uh, text wrap is not, is not a property that you can assign to text, like the body text of a word processing. Mm -hmm. Text wrap is something that is um, assigned on an object by object basis. If you put a shape, in a document, you know, you drag it down from the shapes menu. You can set that shape's text wrap a certain way. You add a text box, you can give it the same text wrap settings or different text wrap settings. But all your text wrap settings are attached to individual shapes or objects. They're not attached to the main flowing text. So you could create a template that had certain objects on the page with certain text wrap settings as long as you use that template for your projects but other than that no not really sorry guy yeah <laughs> so I, okay i want to try to cheat and tell me if this would work but if i if i save if i save it as a template and if i've created that text box and and, mm. and set those settings does that help me or, or is well yes when you use that template it will have those text wrap settings okay but if you add a new object to the page which wasn't part of the template, you'll have to set its text wrap settings however they are. Right. Oh, okay. now, now, I see what you In mean. a page layout document, you could probably create master pages where each of the objects on those master pages had their text wrap settings and they'd stick with the master page. But again, anything you add beyond that, you still have to do it manually. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, that's one we can't solve, at least yet. At well, least, yeah. Again, I'd have to know what he's trying to do to come up with a really good way to work around it. Okay, well, Larry, send, send us more information. Maybe Michael can uh, figure out a workaround. Sure. What um, I don't, I, 
don't see any other questions yet in the chat room. Um, Michael, any other, any other features in particular with this new version? I mean, I know some of the changes were small, some were some of the larger ones you've talked about. Um, but anything that well, really one of the one of the one of the big changes is uh, not so much a new functionality, but a functionality that's now available on iOS that wasn't before. Up until pages seven and pages four on iOS. If you wanted to create paragraph styles or character styles, you could only do that on the Mac. Once a document had those style definitions in them, you open it up on your iOS device or on the web, and those styles are available for you to use. But you couldn't create new ones. You couldn't modify styles. Well, now Pages for iOS lets you completely create brand new paragraph and character styles and add them to a document that will then persist. So if you open up back on the map, on the Mac, those styles are still there. Open it up in a web browser, those styles are still there. So that's, I think, a really big enhancement that doesn't seem like one, except you can now do much more development work directly on iOS without ever going to the Mac. You don't need the Mac as much when you're creating a new pages document. I, I you still can't, you still can't create, uh, list styles yet, but I expect that's going to come soon. Well, as, as you said at the outset, the big push here has been to have as much parity as possible between all the devices. I know we've had the discussion about fonts. That seems to be a bit of a sticking point, and it probably always will be just because of the, because of the nature of fonts, that if you're trying to work with anything specialized or outside the Apple ecosystem, they, there can be challenges. Right. I mean, when you do a Pages document on the Mac, you can use any font that is available on the Mac. On iOS, you're limited to the fonts that come with iOS. There are workarounds, and I think I have a link in the book, to one way to add custom fonts to your iOS device. So you can do that there as well. But it's not, you know, like iOS has an easy way of bringing new fonts in all the time. you got to do a little bit of extra work. It, there is no, you know, uh, type book tool that lets you add fonts really easily to iOS like there is on the Mac. Nonetheless, Pages will respect any fonts you have added on the Mac that don't appear on iOS. It'll simply say this document has fonts that you know you can't see, but it will respect them. It won't change them unless you choose to change them. You know, I don't think that's something that was always that way. If no, I, if I remember, that's one correctly. of the big changes. Yeah, that was a nice one too. Yeah, when, when Pages Five came out, that was one of the big things that it wouldn't change your typefaces on you behind your back. It would respect whatever you did on the Mac on iOS. It wouldn't change anything unless you specifically chose to change it. Yeah. So this is Take Control of Pages, um, and this is an update to the, the, the latest version. So if you own it, it's uh, I assume it's a free update. Is that fair? If you bought the second edition or uh, revision one of the second edition – Yes, it, it's a free update. If you bought the first edition, I think there's an update fee you pay. And if you haven't bought it at all, you pay the full price of fourteen ninety nine. Okay. It's still a heck of a deal because this is – I didn't set out to do this, but this is the longest take control book ever written at 330 pages in PDF form, <laughs> 237 numbered figures. It's massive, and it's the only resource I've ever seen for any uh, of the iWork apps that covers the app on all three platforms, on the Mac, in iOS, and on the web. So no matter what you're working on, I've got instructions for you. I've got explanations for how things work, which is what made the book so hard to do in the first place. You know, I'm sitting here trying something on my Mac with an iPad in one hand and my iPhone in the other. <laughs> and a web browser open as well saying, well, how does this work this way and that way? And it would be a real challenge sometimes to see how everything worked together. Is that why it's such a long, it's such a long book, Michael, or is, is the, yes. Okay. That, that it covers all three is because it's also, right, if a, I cut out everything having to do with iOS and the web, it would be a much shorter book and much less interesting because I think it's, as much as I love my Mac, and I do love my Mac very, very much. I mean, not romantically, but 
you know, platonically, we're, we're very good friends. Yeah. Nonetheless, I also really love my iPad and its smart keyboard and its little Apple Pencil. And having pages that I can do some very sophisticated writing on now without having to come into my office and stand in front of my 27-inch screen is really nice. If I go on a trip, I can take my iPad with me, and I'm just happy as a clam because, you know, it's got just about everything I need right there. Well, too, and, and from because of the font um – how did you say it? It honors the fonts. You know, it mm-hmm. means you can get some real work done anywhere, and then bring mm-hmm. it back to the Mac for polishing off and and using the full feature set that's there. So, yeah. right. And if you store stuff on your iCloud Drive, the moment you go to your Mac, it's already there. Because iCloud Drive is up there, where and as long as you're connected to the internet, you've got access to it. It, it feels like Apple's vision for. For what we we some of us know as the iWork suite, numbers, pages, keynote, and then the web, and then the iDevices, and of course the Mac. That vision was a little cloudy. Uh, sorry, no pun intended. Um, uh, a little cloudy, a little little obscure when, when it first started, but it really has kind of come into its own. And I'm I'm afraid that people have not really kept up with it because it didn't launch fully formed. It's it's evolved into what it is now. Hey, Apple's been good at iterating. You know, uh, their first cut of things isn't always the best cut. It's always a preliminary cut. You know, uh, but iCloud has come to be very robust, at least in my experience, and and quite powerful. And having all of my pages, documents, or all my iWork documents up on iCloud Drive has been just great because you know I can open up a document on one device, go to another device, and it's there. It's just open up, look at my recent files, there's the file I just worked on five minutes ago. Ready to roll. Yeah. Kind of nice. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I know I've I've used it at times when, because I'm storing those things in iCloud Drive, when I I, I have a t- an opportunity to work on something uh, in between meetings or whatever, you know, some time to kill, and it's like, well, I can actually be productive. And then mm. it's right back on the Mac when I go back to the Mac. So, yeah, it's... Again, if, if you haven't checked this out, folks, and, and really availed yourself of some of the capabilities, because where they were a little shaky before, they're pretty much rock solid now, and you can actually depend on them and get some work done. I have been Im- very much impressed by Pages as it's evolved. I, I think you know, there's very little missing that they need to add at this point to bring it back to not only where it was but beyond where it was. In fact, it already does things that the earlier versions couldn't. And I think that's very cool. Or they've done things better than the earlier versions. You know, um, one thing they brought back just before this release was something called linked text boxes, where if you put, had a text box on the page and there was no room to hold all the text you put into it, you couldn't send it anymore. They created a linked text boxes, so what doesn't fit in that box could flow into another text box that you put on the page. You could do that in pages four as well. But there was this user interface where you actually dragged an arrow from one to the other, and maybe it was like three pages away, and it was really awkward to do. They've come up with a whole system of linking text boxes now, which is a lot easier to manage and work just as well, if not better. So again, you know, by going back to the, to the basics and building it from the ground up, they've managed to improve it quite a bit. Yeah, and, you know, that's probably probably something we should have said early on, that you know, when, when Pages was redone, along with Keynote and Numbers, they rebuilt them from the ground up. And as you said in the last, last discussion we had, they did that so that they could accomplish just what they're accomplishing now. That it doesn't mm-hmm. matter whether you're working on a document on the web or iOS or Mac, uh, iPhone, iPad, you know, whatever. It, it You're having a very, very similar experience or as similar an experience as, a experience as you can possibly have given mm-hmm. the characteristics of that device. And so it's yeah, it would have been nice if they could have done it all, but man, that's a that's that's a lot of coding with with everything and a lot of testing and a lot of making sure everything's right. And it, it just takes time. Yeah. Yeah, it takes time. And it's you fun. also have to think about not just can it do it, but what's the best way to do it. And that sometimes takes a lot more thinking than just implementing a feature. Yeah. You have to think about how the user will use that feature you've implemented. 
how they get at the controls <laughs> and the settings so it, it doesn't confuse the living daylights out of them. Yeah. Well, do you have to drag an arrow across three pages, or is there a better way to do the same thing? And we're back to our discussion of, of something like InDesign or Quark Express, where mm-hmm. you know how easy and accessible is it for the user to do what they mm-hmm. want? You know, maybe okay, yeah. So maybe there's some features that just aren't there, but mm-hmm. again, for most people, man, and and let's not forget the price is right. It's free. It's free. If you own a Mac or an iOS device, it's free. Why wouldn't you it, it, play with this? It is the best free word processor I've ever laid my hands on. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, tell us where uh, where folks can find you when you're not here doing this with us. And, and, and I, I definitely want to thank you for this because this is – Still a little bit of an experiment for us, but um, it seems like I'm getting more and more feedback that people like this because they like the opportunity maybe to come and and see us do it live, see how the sausage is made, but also the chance to interact a little bit and get some questions answered. So, Well, I, I, I'm still writing books for Take Control Books. You can certainly find me through Take Control Books. Uh, you can find me at Tidbits because I'm a regular Tidbits contributor as well. Um you can find me on Twitter as Lyman, L-Y-M-O-N-D. And those of you who know the author, Dorothy Dennett, will recognize that name and others will go, oh, that's fine. <laughs> and I'm also on Facebook if, if you know where to look for me. Yeah, and since- I don't, however, I don't friend anybody that I don't actually know or very rarely, not on Facebook. Okay. So I know some people who, who like to have like thousands of friends. Nah. <laughs> If I've never met you or we've never spoken, I'm probably not going to add you as a friend. But I will write to you if you write me an email. Yeah, and, and then maybe you'll strike up a correspondence, and then maybe Michael will friend you. You know, yeah. he'll f- <laughs> find you up to a real person. Michael, thanks so much. I'm I'm anxious for uh, whatever your next project is, so we can get you back here and uh, maybe do this thing again, or if not, just on a regular Mac Voices show. But one way or the other, I, I always appreciate the wisdom you have to share. Well, thank you, Chuck. I'm, I hope the next time we meet, it's not because I had to rewrite the pages book yet again. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Oh, my. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Uh, I hope you enjoying, are you enjoying the Facebook Live things. We're, we're trying them out and then releasing them, of course, uh, into the other channels to make sure that the folks that can't be here or aren't on Facebook or, book or whatever also get to, to benefit from the, from the wisdom. So with that, until the next time, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com. <laughs>